The shape of a molecule is determined by the number of bonds that the central atom has to achieve stability. There are four basic shapes that we have to know. The central atom is represented by the pink circle and it can form either one, two, three or four bonds, which represent the four different shapes that we're going to look at. In this video, we're going to be able to look at all of these four shapes and decide by looking at the atoms which surround it, whether the molecule is polar or if the symmetry of the molecule cancels out polarity. Let's take shape number one, which is linear. Here we can see that this is a diatomic element and the reason we know this is because we have two green circles, which means that we have the same type of element and we've got two atoms joined together. We can look along the x-axis and we can see that we've got a line of symmetry and along the y-axis we've also got a line of symmetry, so therefore this would be a symmetrical shape. So what happens if we have two different types of element joined in a linear structure? Well, we can see across the x-axis we would have a line of symmetry, it would be the same on either side. However, when we do a line of symmetry down the y-axis, we can see that that is not mirrored on either side, so this would be an example of linear which would be not symmetrical. Shape number two is angular. What we can see is along the x-axis, we would never have a line of symmetry. It's not the same on either side of the line. However, we do have a line of symmetry along the y-axis, but because all over the molecule is not symmetrical, this is one of the shapes that will never be symmetrical. Shape number three is trigonal pyramidal. What we can see is that there is no line of symmetry across the x-axis. And because of this, shape number three, trigonal pyramidal, is never symmetrical. Shape number four is tetrahedral. We can see for this example that along the x-axis, we have the line of symmetry. Okay, tetrahedral has a bond angle of 109.5, so all the bond angles are the same. It is symmetrical along the x and the y-axis because all of the atoms surrounding the central atom are the same. So therefore, this would be a symmetrical shape. So what happens when we change the combination of atoms around the central atom? So what we can see here is there is now not a line of symmetry because the atoms around the central atom are different and therefore it would be not symmetrical. The only two shapes which can cancel out polarity in a polar molecule is linear and tetrahedral. You must look at the types of atoms and their electronegativity to determine if they are symmetrical with the same pool on the shared pair of electrons. Let's go through an example and decide whether this molecule is polar or nonpolar. So question number one, is there a difference in electronegativity? Well, the electronegativity value of carbon is 2.6, hydrogen is 2.2, so we do have a difference in electronegativity. Question two, is it one of the symmetrical shapes, linear or tetrahedral? Yes, this shape is tetrahedral. Is the pool symmetrical? Remember, symmetry cancels out polarity. Well, we can see that the four atoms around the central atom of carbon are the same, which means the pool will be the same, which means it will cancel out polarity. So therefore, this molecule is nonpolar and only has LDFs. Is this molecule polar or nonpolar? Firstly, are there a difference in electronegativity? Yes, we have carbon, which is 2.6, hydrogen, which is 2.2, and we also have chlorine, which is 3.2. So we can see that there is a difference in electronegativity within the bond of carbon and hydrogen, and also a difference in electronegativity between carbon and chlorine. Is it one of the symmetrical shapes, linear or tetrahedral? Yes, it is tetrahedral. However, is the pool symmetrical? Remember, symmetry cancels out polarity. For this one, it is not symmetrical, so therefore remains polar, and therefore would have LDFs and permanent dipole permanent dipole interactions. Is this polar or nonpolar? Is there a difference in electronegativity? Well, sulfur has 2.6, hydrogen has 2.2, so there is a difference in electronegativity. Is it one of the symmetrical shapes, linear or tetrahedral? No which means that it is always going to be polar and therefore would have London dispersive forces and permanent dipole permanent dipole interactions. Is this example polar or nonpolar? Firstly, is there a difference in electronegativity? Yes, we have carbon, which is 2.6, and we have oxygen, which is 3.4. Is it one of our symmetrical shapes? Yes, it is linear. 
Is the pool symmetrical? So are the atoms on either side of the carbon atom the same? Yes, so therefore symmetry cancels out polarity, so therefore this molecule would be nonpolar and only have London dispersal forces. So there are three types of intermolecular force or van der Waals force that we have to know and we're asked often to compare these intermolecular forces. The weakest we have is the London dispersal forces which are forces of attraction that can operate between all atoms and molecules due to the movement of electrons. We then have permanent dipole permanent dipole interactions which are found only in polar molecules and then the strongest is hydrogen bonds, which are forces found between the molecules which have a hydrogen directly bonded to an N, O or F. Remember, this hydrogen is attracted to the N, O or F of another molecule. Let's have a go at explaining fully in terms of structure and bonding which of these molecules has the higher boiling point. So let's look at carbon tetrachloride first. Is there a difference in electronegativity? Well, yes, carbon has 2.6 and chlorine has 3.2. Is it one of our symmetrical shapes, linear or tetrahedral? Yes, it is tetrahedral. Do we have the same pool for the bonding electrons around the central atom? In this case, we do. So therefore, symmetry cancels out polarity. So this would be nonpolar and only have London dispersal forces. For example two, we'll put the electronegativities on. Carbon is 2.6, chlorine is 3.2 and hydrogen is 2.2. So there is a difference in electronegativity between the atoms in a bond. It is our tetrahedral shape, but if we look at the atoms surrounding it, it is not the same atoms that are all around the central atom, the carbon, so therefore this remains polar. This would have London dispersal forces and permanent dipole-permanent dipole interactions. So CCL3H has stronger intermolecular forces. It has the permanent dipole, permanent dipole interactions. So therefore more energy is required to break these, so a higher boiling point. Higher 2018, written 2B part two, explain fully of these three chlorides, why silicon tetrachloride is the most soluble in hexane. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to draw out hexane. We would put the electronegativities on, so carbon is 2.6 and hydrogen is 2.4. Now what we need to know is that this molecule is symmetrical. We can see that all of the carbons have the same pool, they have the same atom round the outside of it. Um, and what we need to know is all hydrocarbons are nonpolar. And that's because the symmetry cancels out the polarity, which means it's only going to have LDFs. Now we know that like dissolves like, so if hexane is nonpolar, we would want to suggest that silicon tetrachloride is nonpolar. So let's have a look. Silicon has the electronegativity 1.9, chlorine has 3.2, so there is a difference in electronegativity. Is it one of our two symmetrical shapes, linear or tetrahedral? It is tetrahedral. If we look at the atoms surrounding, are they all the same and have the same pool? Yes, so the symmetry cancels out polarity, which means that silicon tetrachloride is nonpolar and it only has London dispersal forces. And because we have nonpolar and nonpolar, we know like dissolves like, and that is why silicon tetrachloride is the most soluble in hexane. Higher 2023, written 2A part 1, explain fully why the boiling points of group 4 hydrides increase going down the group. In your answer, you should refer to the intermolecular forces involved. So what I would do here is I would choose two of the examples that are on opposite sides. So let's choose um, CH4 and SNH4. So if we have a look at these, we can see that they are symmetrical. So therefore, they are going to be non-polar and contain LDFs. If we're looking at the CH4, um, it has a total of 10 electrons per molecule, whereas the SNH4 has a total of 54 electrons per molecule. So as you go down a group, um, of the hydrides, there are more electrons and therefore more LDF, so more energy is required to break these, resulting in a higher boiling point. Written to a part two, name the type of intermolecular force that is responsible for the anomalous boiling point of ammonia NH3. So ammonia is our trigonal pyramidal shape. 
we have different seasonal electronegativity and it is not a symmetrical shape which means that this molecule remains polar and it would contain London dispersal forces, permit dipole permit dipole interactions and it would also contain hydrogen bonds. So it's the hydrogen bonds which are the strongest intermolecular force which has to be overcome. Thank <laughs> you.